Hello everybody, welcome back to Talking Wolves. We're back today with another video, a new little series throughout the next few weeks or so. It's the Talking Wolves World Cup Roundup. Uh, before we start off though, my name is Dave. I'm joined today with Ewan and Matt. Boys, say hello. What's up, hello, Matt? So, uh, basically what we're going to be doing is looking at the various players that Wolves obviously have on our current books or players that we are linked with and seeing how they've been getting on in the World Cup, looking at the in-game stats, looking at our opinions of it as well. And you guys as well, let us know in the comment section down below or follow us on Twitter because after every match, we're going to be posting some stats of the specific players. And uh, if you guys comment, you may well be on the video. So, boys, we'll kick off with, well, the first sort of full day of fixtures, which was Friday. Morocco versus Iran, and we got to see our man Romain Saïs in action. Uh, yeah. Obviously playing for Morocco against Iran. We normally see him as a central midfielder, seen him a lot uh, next to Neves, but plays it in a sort of central defensive role for Morocco. Uh, I'll quickly go through his stats before we start off, though. Obviously played the full 90. Uh, Passing-wise, he made 87.1% of his passes. He, he Out of his 70 passes, that was four long balls in there. Uh, just looking at some of the stats, really. Defensive-wise, one tackle made, two fouls and four clearances. Overall, fairly quiet game for him. I see. I saw some of the tackles he made, but Ewan, what did you think overall of his performance? We've got whoscored.com, who gave him a 6.2, but do you think he deserved a little bit higher than that? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, in general, I think he had a really good game. I think, obviously, yeah. he's used to playing centre-back for Morocco, so he sort of fits in well with the other guys at the back. Um, but, yeah, I think positionally, he could have been a little bit better. Um, I think that was more first half, though. Second half, he did improve with that. Um, but, yeah, like some of his last-ditch tackles were class. And I think within, what, four minutes, he pinged that 60-yard ball um, <laughs> <laughs> down to their, to their wing back. And it, I was just thinking, mate, here we are. He started. Um, so, yeah, not, not too bad of a performance. I think maybe a 7 or 7.5 would probably have been a better score, though. But obviously now, Matt, Morocco are going to go on to two much tougher games in their group. Um, so obviously they would have wanted to, to try and get something out of the game, conceded the last-minute goal. But what were your thoughts overall on Saïs' performance? I remember saying to you guys that after about 20 minutes, I was like, yeah. Saïs looks terrible at centre-half. Because <laughs> he kept, he kept like, committing, Yeah. Um, which is all right, wouldn't you in midfield? Because that's obviously where he's used to playing. He got another line of defence, but... He kept getting dragged out and committing to the ball, leaving a huge gap mm. in behind. He got caught out once or twice, but once I said that, he started playing better. Must have, must have heard that. Um, <laughs> yeah, his, his passing was, was good. But yeah, he has got that. He does that for Wolves. More so on the when when Lambert was there and that season, where he was, he was pinging balls a bit more than Neves. Obviously, Neves does that a lot more now. Yeah, yeah he's a good passer of a ball. And defensively, after the first 25 minutes, he did look he did look quite good. Um, I don't think I'd like him to play at centre-half of Wolves. Um, I think he could do the Cody role, maybe as a sweeper, because I worry a little bit about him physically. Because obviously, mm -hmm. he's, he's a fairly big fella, but there's not much to him, is there? He, yeah, you know, he'd get bullied by a big striker like Cody does against the likes of Mitrovic. But yeah, I thought he played. I thought he played well after that, and I think he'll be disappointed with the result, especially the way they lost it in the added time. It was a shame, it? Yeah. yeah. Well, that, yeah, I was going to be my next question, you and do you think? Obviously, with Matt said he probably played the axle, uh, the center of the free at the back. Do you think he could do the same, or do you think he could take that sort of right center back role? Um, I'm not sure about. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he played the Cody role, like Matt said. Um, yeah. But, yeah, his physicality does worry me a little bit. But he does seem to get stuck in. Like, he's winning headers left, right and centre on um, when they played. So, I'm not too sure. I'd, I think maybe we could test him in pre-season. Um, but, at the moment, I think Cody's, Cody's good enough. But, yeah, he might come up against some, uh, obviously, tougher opposition in the Premier League. He wins think... headers quite a lot for us in the middle of the park. He but does, it's yeah. Like, fair, yeah. It's those... Those duels where you're going like side to side with someone, where yeah. someone like Enjoy would have come out on top, he he looks a little bit lightweight. So, he's, but that's oh, yeah. why I worry about him as a centre yeah. half. But I don't I know. think the test now is going to be good for for us as Wolves fans. I think it's fair to say with that loss for Morocco, the chances of them getting through the group they were tough already, but they're probably even tougher if if not impossible now. Yes. They got Portugal and Spain as their next two games. I think well, it's going to be a good ta ta uh, test. For obviously Saiz, Morocco are going to be a lot more defensive, but they're going to be coming up against top, top quality players. Players that Wolves will probably see a few of next season uh, as an opposition. It's going to be coming up against the likes of sort of Cristiano Ronaldo, obviously, Diego Costa. 
Andre Gomez, uh, Andre Silva might be playing for Portugal as well, obviously. So it'll be interesting. I think the Premier League quality uh, strikers, midfielders that say he's going to come up against, so it's going to be interesting to see how they get on. And with some of the teams that have dropped points already, um, it may be a decent defensive performance for Morocco. But obviously, speaking about Portugal, we'll move on to them now. The man that is signing to Wolves is almost imminent. We've uh, even heard off BBC WM today that it's more or less done, hopefully. Uh, Mr. Rui Patricio, the goalkeeper. So, probably the game of the tournament so far that he was involved in, the 3-3 free, free draw against Spain. Conceding three goals with some positive uh, thoughts about his performance, negative thoughts about his performance. Boys, uh, you and we'll start with you. How did you think Patricio got on over the 90 minutes? Um, I don't think he played too badly. Um, yeah. I think some of the criticism, criticism he's received online from... Uh, Wolves fans is a bit harsh uh, from yep. one game, you know. But yeah, like we said before, his distribution wasn't the best. Like we said before, we, we hopped on, uh, but I don't think he could really do that much about the goals. I mean, like it's Ronaldo at the end of the day. It's you know, sorry, what am I saying? Not Ronaldo. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's you're playing against Spain at the end of the day, so obviously you're going to come up against good opposition. Um, so yeah, I don't think he could do much about the goals, but his distribution could have been improved. Yeah, I mean, first goal was, for me, poor defensive work. It yeah. was a fantastic effort and, and shot from Diego Costa. Second goal was right across him. It would have been very, very difficult. And the third goal, I don't think two or three keepers would have stopped nah, that. That natural I mean, strike was yeah. unreal. Um, Matt, overall thoughts? I'd imagine you saw the game. What did you think of his yeah, performance? Um, he didn't do too bad. But probably could have done a little bit better. But yeah. it's a good job he's got Ronaldo to bail him out. But, <laughs> yeah. the, but the Costa goal, the way Lord Pepe it was so lightweight. It's oh, got yeah. absolutely. I think you meant Fonte though. Just kept backing off, backing off, backing yeah, off. Yeah, it surprised me a lot though. That did. You know, yeah. you got to give him a chance. It's just ridiculous defending, especially someone so experienced with like Pepe. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, his distribution weren't great, and I don't think I can be bothered with having another keeper at Wolves who can't kick a ball because <laughs> we haven't had anyone's distribution who's been perfect since Hennessy yeah. really. Yeah, I mean, well, I, we look at it. Uh, we've looked at stats of him before. We've done videos on Patricio before. His his distribution and stuff normally is pretty good. Wolves very, very rarely sort of play that long ball anyway. We mm. do obviously even Ruddy was playing the short passes. Fever receives the ball a lot. So as long as he's on, he's on the ball, he's quite comfortable. Um, I think we'll be all right. But overall, you don't, you don't um, play at that level for so long for being. Oh, of being course, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. So. So some of the comments I've seen of Portugal football fans, even over the last day or so, ranking him sort of, uh, sort of the second tier of goalkeepers, the elite being obviously the, well, normally would say the De Gea's, the the Oblaks, the, the Neuers, and so on, and he's sort of the tier just below those, one of the most underrated goalkeepers in Europe. So if we get our hands on him, um, I think any fans that are waiting, it's probably not going to be announced unless they announce it when the new kit comes. I don't think it's going to be announced until after Portugal's campaign. So. Uh, if anyone does keep asking us when Patricio is going to be announced, that's probably going to be your answer anyway. Mm. Um, so, yeah, his performance, OK. Uh, we now obviously move on to the Wolves' latest signing, Raul Jimenez, who came on for the last uh, 24 minutes. So just about a quarter of Mexico's game up against uh, Germany. They went and won, obviously, one goal to nil. Fantastic counter-attacking football from Mexico as a whole. Jimenez came on. We're quite excited for that. Came on sort of a, as a left winger role, but with the way Mexico were playing, he played really, really deep. You were, were you convinced with Jimenez, or I, I mean, do we need to judge him on a much bigger performance? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, he came on when they were one nil up against Germany, so he's never going to be able to uh, have that freedom with the ball to go and you know sort of express himself. I know he had that one uh, one chance, which perhaps he could have done better with, um, but yeah, he, they were just under the cosh, so he had to sat, he had to sit back. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't the best performance from him, but I think we should reserve judgment till we see him a couple more games in, sort of thing. Yeah, so obviously that massive win for for Mexico. Yeah. Twenty four minutes, as we say, you got a fifty percent pass success, uh, succession rate. Uh, two aerial duels, one. Mm. I think he played ten passes overall. The key pass, I think they had that sort of three on two opportunity where yeah. he should have played it over a lot earlier or in, and it went straight to the defender. I think that almost summed up his performance really. Mm. And again, it was sort of mixed mixed opinions on him on Twitter. Um, plenty to see. If I quickly get the the comments on him up now, Matt, what did you think of his performance? Overall, though, I mean, what else could he have done? I know he was poor on that three on two situation, yeah. but mm. he's been sent on to try and 
contain Germany and use him as an as an outlet, try and hold hold the ball up or regain possession or hold on to it for a little bit longer. But you know, he was playing playing a defensive role, and you're asking your, your centre forward to do that. So he looked out of his depth because he was. That's not his position. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I even think we should reserve judgment until he's played a few games for Wolves rather than Mexico because Nuno might use him completely different to how the Mexico coach uses him. Uh, I, I think, know yeah. a few of the Mexican um, fans aren't a big fan of the Mexico manager because he tinkers with the team too much, changes the tactics quite a lot. So, I don't know. Um, he looks a big physical specimen, which <laughs> I think is what we need. But, yeah, he, I mean, he wasn't great, but you know, what else is expected? They won the game, that's all that matters. The, yeah. Well, he was playing on the left-hand side of a sort of three. I'd imagine he's going to play central anyway for Wolves. I know they all sort of roam and anyway the, the front three. But some of the comments on the, obviously on the Talking Wolves Twitter, Alex Goncalves said it was a pretty poor game, wasteful going forward, went down too easily. But he put in a shift defensively, sacrificed his own performance to the team. And when you implement an out-and-out striker in a defensive left-wing position, he's hardly going to be influential. Yeah. Uh, George said he gave the ball away during crucial moments, but you can't expect a target man to be able to retain possession on the left wing and defend. You can't really take a lot of it from it. Uh, Dan Vincent said he wasn't the best, but you can only get better. Hard to get into a game as a sub, even as a super sub. Uh, Ricky Walls, not bad to say. He came on with his team on the back foot against a very good pressing German side. Passing could have been a bit better, I'm sure. With the old gold shirt, it will bring the best out of him. But as I say, I think those fans are pretty, let's say, sort of on the same page as us lot. So obviously we've not really spoke much about uh, Jimenez since he's come in. Uh, but Matt, do you think obviously other forwards are going to come in? Do you think Jimenez is going to be the number one forward for Wolves, or do you think we're going to bring in uh, a bigger, bigger name? I'd like to think we're going to bring in a bigger name. We need a, we need that marquee signing. Like, I know it sounds sounds silly saying that Jimenez isn't a marquee signing because <laughs> yeah, you know, got a buy buy out clause of like thirty five million. Um, but yeah, I think the ambition that we've been led to believe by folks and there should be another striker coming in mm. and another three or four players I think we need we need a goal scorer and I know that's easy to say but we need someone who's proven we need to go and break the bank to get one because Jimenez has got a good record but a lot of the time he's off the bench but is, is he mm. going to want to come to Modern U and just play off the bench I don't know but yeah I think we do need a, another striker someone to play ahead of Jimenez I think that's the interesting thing, as you say. He came in. I think he's left Benfica because he's not getting the game time he wants. He's going to come to Wolves hoping to get the game time, but I don't think Wolves fans are one hundred percent convinced that he should be getting the game time. Not in the fact that we've sort of written him off before he's even kicked the ball for us yet, but the fact that uh, we need someone that we know is going to bag sort of fifteen, twenty goals. Jimenez might be the man, but we we don't know yet. Um, you earn next two games to Mexico. Obviously, we're going to probably do this sort of video again. Yeah. You've got South Korea, obviously, in Sweden. Do you think Jimenez is going to get some more game time and hopefully against, no disrespect to um, South Korea and Sweden, uh, slightly lesser opposition and might actually get a couple of chances to bag a couple of goals? Yeah, well, after seeing that game today, uh, the Sweden-South Korea game, I think he's definitely going to have more of a, a chance to, uh, to run at them and you know get into those positions because... I mean, they've both defended well today, and I think Sweden have obviously been the better side, but especially against South Korea, I'd be expecting him to, to really get into those positions and get in some shots away. Perfect. So, obviously, hopefully you guys at home are enjoying the, the World Cup. Obviously, England kicking off their campaign. We wish them all the best of luck. But if there's any more players that you guys think that we should discuss, any players that are linked with Wolves or any other players that you want us to have a quick look at, let us know in the comment section down below along with your thoughts on the four, three players that we sort of highlighted today. Make sure, as always, you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Plenty more Wolves content coming up. And all our social medias in the description down below. All the Talking Wolves Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all three of our social medias as well but until next time guys hopefully you enjoyed today's video hopefully you enjoy the next week of world cup action and we'll see you all next time